talk to me, talk to me. If you feel the need or when you need the feeling, talk to me. If you feel the need or when you need the feeling, talk to me. Hello everyone, I'm Timothy Go, and welcome to That's IT. And if I hear you say, where the hell am I? Well, I'll give you the opportunity to guess where am I, and I'll reveal the answer at the end of the segment. It is season nine of That's IT, and I thought it's about time we talk about smartphones. After all, they've been around for about 10 years now, providing all of us busy people with so much convenience in one handheld device. BlackBerry is going when no other business smartphone device has gone before. It is going consumer. And it is using this to push, push email to us regular folks. Research in Motion, the makers of BlackBerry, is seeing great growth potential in the consumer smartphone segment. So it got smart and decided to create handhelds to visually appeal to us. One of its executives told me once you see it, you will want to have it. We've come a long way in the last three years in terms of industrial design. We actually have quite a first-rate industrial design department now at RIM. Um, when I joined the company three years ago, our products had great software, but we had some work to do on the hardware side. And I think as you've seen the progression of devices with the 8700 and then the Pearl and the Curve and the 8800 last year, and I think the Bold is really a culmination of a lot of the design work that we've been trying to do to make our products look world-class, to be aspirational. And holding on to its product is what many have been doing. BlackBerry says they've seen a shift in its customer base with more new subscribers being recreational smartphone users and not the Wall Street types. But I wonder, apart from the BlackBerry's newer haute couture outfits, what else do their devices have that make them a cut above the rest? The BlackBerry Enterprise server is a strong lead because we have 150,000 odd servers out there. It's, it's really a global standard for wireless enterprise, and so the multinationals have built on it around the world and it just flows naturally into Asia and Asian companies have built on around the world it naturally flows back to their home base. It has to be in order to attract business users um, and as we add some consumer capabilities we're also finding that those same consumer capabilities are not only attractive to consumer users but they're also increasingly attractive to the business user. And so the bold was born. Part business device, part recreational phone, but all BlackBerry. The Bold is 3G enabled and comes with high-res ultra-bright display. The Bold also comes with music applications that will let you sync it with your iTunes. So working, emailing, and making phone calls will be easier than ever. Now that may be so, but in a market saturated with smartphones and phones with smarter features, what's a company like Research in Motion to do to stay ahead of the smartphone pack? And you're just seeing people say, well, if I can, for the same, pretty much the same price, I can now get a smartphone instead of a cell phone, I'm going to do that because I can get all these great applications. And um, when, you have, when you're sort of in the middle of a disruption, competition is almost welcomed because it just creates a bigger space for everybody to grow into. Everyone is indeed running to be in the forefront of smartphone technology. There are many devices out there trying to emulate a smartphone wanting a piece of the smartphone pie. But what must a device be? Or what should it have for it to be considered a smartphone? And not just a phone with powerful features. We'll discuss that in just a while. And speaking of software, we also take a look at what the folks at Microsoft are doing to improve its much maligned Windows Mobile 6 operating system that it came out with last year. That's coming up a little bit later on. Earlier this year, That's IT caught up with Sony Ericsson's president, Dick Komiyama, in Barcelona for an exclusive one-on-one. -on -one. And this week, he is our Profile of the Week. What phone do you use right now? Oh, I use the uh, uh, called P1, which is... Uh, uh, one of the currently the uh, top of the line and has the uh, uh, you can do the emails and you can do uh, uh, internet and you can you can organizers and uh, you, you have all, all these features available and uh, it is pretty good I think. 
course, a powerful business phone. How often are you connected, though? Do you switch off your phone? Do you switch off your computer? Or are you on it all the time? Yeah, I'll be basically almost 24 hours. <laughs> almost 24 hours. No resting for you. Uh, <laughs> probably uh, I leave it to the best side when I'm sleeping, of course. <laughs> but it's still turned on. Yeah, yes. Being president, of course, of Sony Ericsson, do you get to test phones made by different companies? Oh, yes. Some product is uh, easy to read, certainly, and uh, it's a good light. And uh, uh, some of them, you know, the, uh, actually we find it easy. But, it, but also the uh, uh, cost, cost aspect, uh, on the, that's also attract some of the uh, 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 engineering as well as a uh, production capability of that makes a uh, product rather cheap, but yet provide very basic uh, uh, needs for the consumer. So uh, those are all the things I can see that uh, uh, some of the competitors are the good ones. Do you ever use a different phone apart from Sony Ericsson? No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Well, that interview was done on the sidelines of the World Mobile Congress in Barcelona. But have you guessed where we are yet? If you say Orlando, Florida, then you are right. The sun is shining. We traveled more than 26 hours to get to this side of the world to catch up with the latest happenings at Research in Motion's World Enterprise Symposium. All right, it's time for us to get packing because next we fly to the beautiful Pacific Northwest and check in with the guys at Microsoft to see what they're doing to make our smartphones even smarter. That's IT. We'll be right back. Victims of human trafficking, how can they break out of their poverty chain? Our correspondent has the story of modern-day heroes helping them, and one of them is software giant Microsoft. That's tonight on Primetime News. Let's <laughs> 可惜已经过时了。Great minds team with cutting edge technology to create smart businesses. On the premiering episode of Cutting Edge, the business of childcare is no child's play. Find out how intelligent solutions will elevate a leading childcare provider's status to a whole new level. All on Cutting Edge, Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. This program is brought to you exclusively by Canon. Canon, delighting you always. As a run-up to the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, Channel News Asia takes you to China to catch a glimpse of what people are doing to add color and zest for the grand event. Catch the buzz from Beijing every night at 9.25 p.m. on Channel News Asia. In a brand new season of Asian Dragons Rising, Beyond its traditional fare, Crystal Jade is now serving different cuisines, including chic Western. Find out why and what it's doing to fight rising food prices. And find out how a Singapore tannery transformed a traditional craft into a sophisticated business and emerged as one of the top five tanneries in the world. Thursday at 9.30 p.m. on Channel News Asia. Six hours later and here we are in Seattle. So aside from being famous for Starbucks and for being sleepless, the Evergreen State is also home to that omnipresent IT giant, Microsoft. And we're here to see what its engineers are creating to improve what Microsoft Mobile can offer as a smartphone OS to non-Blackberry devices. 
shipments of smartphone devices rose 60% in the Asia-Pacific region in 2007, making it the largest region for these business enterprise devices. Now mobile industry watchers say better technology and lower prices will also give a significant boost in sales of smartphones worldwide. Explosive growth in the smartphone market means there is an OS war happening out there. And market researchers at Instat.com predicts this growth will involve major shifts among the OS platforms. And it says the winner will be Microsoft Mobile. Microsoft Mobile is not in the business of making hardware, but its OS currently powers devices made by 48 manufacturers, including top brands like Samsung, Motorola, LG, and Sony Ericsson. We outsell BlackBerry today, so there's more Windows mobile phones in the market than there are BlackBerry phones. We outsell Apple by an even wider margin today. Um, and I, you know, I think, obviously, Nokia has the leadership position. Um, but we're certainly amongst the leaders and in a great position for things going forward. Uh, in particular, as phones move from being just voice devices to being these multi-purpose devices, we think that's the place where we can really have an impact. I want to share! The impact he is talking about is the impact Microsoft Mobile 6.1 might have. The newly released OS is supposedly a much better version of last year's 6.0, which we saw in Barcelona. The biggest thing that we did in Windows Mobile 6.1 was to really simplify the way that you use a phone. Your phones have become much more, a little more complicated. You're able to access the internet, not only do texting, but also listen to music. And getting to that sometimes had been a bit difficult. We now really make that easy. One button, one finger, get to all those things really, really simply. And we know we're continually improving. Uh, as you add you know, new capabilities in, you always have an opportunity to, to integrate it in to make it more simple to use. So instead of uh, if I want to calendar something, I don't want to just go to a calendar. Maybe I want to go and, and look at, at you know, my time with you or do it right from a message or to be able to be uh, looking at a web page and be able to copy information and text it over to you. Um, all of those things we've gotten much better at uh, and making easier for people to use. With it, Microsoft not only promises to let us surf our smartphones like we do our PCs, it also lets us have a brand new smartphone experience. But despite all that it promises to deliver, and despite a high-profile client like the Samsung Omnia relying on it, tech watchers are already talking about the next generation Windows Mobile 7. But people here in Redmond won't even talk to me about it. Instead, we were directed to a man who seemed to be having all the fun just putting ringtones together. Okay, it's time to take a break from all the smartphone technology and look at what we have in store for you in this week's Gadget of the Week. And here's a disclaimer. Gadget of the Week is not about the best toys out there, but rather the latest innovations to hit the market this week. After all, we just want to be fair. Who are we to tell you what's good for you? The Samsung Omnia is as close as we here in Asia will get to an iPhone, at least for now. And that's perhaps why Samsung chose to unleash the power of the Omnia in Asia. The Omnia, which means wish in Arabic and everything in Latin, is a power-packed smartphone draped in the latest fashion trends. The Omnia comes in a sleek 12.1 metallic casing with intuitive touchscreen. The Omnia's navigation application is modeled after laptops, so switching from one application to another is a breeze, and it feels good to the touch. But selling a touchscreen phone to Tim is like selling ice cubes to the Eskimos. Have you ever got this problem where your hi-fi system doesn't accept the different music file formats you have, or doesn't sync with your portable music device? Well, Philips' new micro hi-fi system can solve that problem. This Bluetooth Micro Hi-Fi BTM630 accepts music file formats like MP3 and WMA. It also allows you to play your music through a CD, SD card, MMC card, USB, and Bluetooth. Yep, did I mention Bluetooth? Well, now you can sync whatever you are playing on your music phone seamlessly to your Hi-Fi. Welcome to Singtel's time announcement service. Tencent Not only can you do that, you can also make or answer phone calls via your Hi-Fi. And for those who are counting down to getting your 3G iPhone here in Asia, this micro Hi-Fi also comes with an iPod dock. Finally, 
something that frees your music. The Nokia E-Series has always been a serious business phone with plenty of rich features, but the successor of the E61i is what we would call a stylish business phone. The new Nokia E71 has made a significant improvement in its design. It is noticeably sleek, sexy, and slim, and it is a serious challenger among the latest smartphones we've seen so far. The E71 also managed to squeeze in more features into its small and solid steel frame body. It has a 3.2 megapixel camera, a 60 million color display, even better battery life, and best of all, it now comes with GPS. There are smartphones and phones that are just smart, or mobile phones that can work as hard as your smartphone. So what's the difference? And for that matter, are they offering overlapping features? A smartphone is a, a product that combines a lot of different capabilities, but does so in a way that has an open operating system and is extensible for adding new software and new applications. A smartphone should function just like your PC or notebook. In other words, it is a mobile gadget that grows. If you look at a lot of the traditional cell phones in the marketplace, they may have a lot of capabilities that they have coming out of the box, but what really defines a smartphone is something that, like a PC, is, has an operating system, has the ability to add new applications later on, and the ability to upgrade that software in the field. Well, actually, it's difficult to define smartphone as it is. Smartphone is nowadays beyond quality pad and you know all this business orientation is beyond business use so it's coming closer to consumer side and also in terms of design features it's more than quality pad is full touch screen so containing full rich media therefore smartphone trend we can say is very diverse and then it's emerging all different multimedia feature and design aspect. Smartphones come in uh, various different uh, sizes and, 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 and form factors. We have uh, built a lot of functionality that is needed by the uh, professional users today, like uh, the functionality that is uh, today visible in uh, E71, Nokia E71 product that was launched, launched today. Uh, we are uh, supporting uh, email, we are supporting uh, uh, maps, navigation, music, all the things that uh, uh, the sophisticated smartphone users uh, today need. The mobile phone industry is increasingly focusing on user experience as opposed to features. So the division line between smartphone and non-smartphones is blurring. People don't really think about smartphone or non-smartphone. People think about phone that is enjoyable to use. In 2007, we experienced tremendous growth. We shipped a total of over 10 million handsets. That's IT is in Seattle, and we'll be back with more. Victims of human trafficking, how can they break out of their poverty chain? Our correspondent has the story of modern-day heroes helping them, and one of them is software giant Microsoft. That's tonight on Primetime News. Tonight on Business Nanny. Purple Sage is the caterer with style. It is their distinctive branding that has helped CEO Tony Xiao make his mark in a very competitive market. So what else can business nanny John Biddleston add to his brand? Join us as we find out what kind of stir he's causing. Catch him tonight at 9.30 p.m. Tomorrow on Primetime Morning... Chicken rice, dumplings, satay and tei tarik, essential items of the Singapore Food Festival. We find out why food is such an effective marketing tool in tourism. They're making money. Markets are roiling, so what do you do with your cash? We'll find out the best investment strategy to take in these volatile times. Plus, we explore how these Vietnamese artworks aim to conserve heritage. It's all happening Wednesday on Pantai Morning. They're interested in me because of what they see in Singapore. If you compare their infrastructure today with what was, it's a completely different China.
Well, their biggest uh, difficulty is first to educate the whole population and bring them up to standard. No, but the shift is already on. On the final part of our series on China's march forward, listen to Minister Mentor Lee Kuan Yew. Join me on Channel News Asia. That's IT is in the U.S. this week, tracking the future of the smartphone. But before I forget, let's have a look at what's making headlines in IT News this week. It is a first of its kind in the internet world. Google signed an agreement with Brazilian public prosecutors to help combat child pornography on its social networking site, Orkut. The company will facilitate evidence gathering under judicial order in suspected crimes against children and teenagers on Orkut without the need for international legal accords. Google will also preserve for at least six months access logs of users being investigated for illegal conduct. Brazilian prosecutors say 90% of illegal internet content being investigated in Brazil involves Orkut. The site has 60 million users, half of them in Brazil. In the U.S., rumors are swirling that Microsoft may be slashing prices for its best-selling Xbox 360 Pro model. Rumors of the Xbox price cuts started on popular gaming blogs last week. There were even pictures of flyers advertising it at 299 U.S. dollars. A cut to 299 would make the Xbox 360 Pro $100 less than PlayStation 3. Microsoft is locked in a three-way competition with Nintendo's Wii and Sony's PlayStation 3. In terms of sales, Wii is leading the pack with 25 million units sold worldwide, followed by the Xbox 360. Now back to our main feature. With the boom in demand for smartphones globally, hungry tech companies all want a share of this growing pie. Android, the new smartphone platform by IT giant Google, is on the loose. This new software promises to be as capable as any other handset platforms out there, and best of all, it is free. The Linux-based software also allows advanced users or software developers to openly tweak and mess with its codes. Android's an open source platform for mobile phones, and that means that uh, the technology that we've created will be made available freely to anybody who wants to use it. So we expect a lot of people to develop innovative applications on top of the platform itself. Uh, cell phone manufacturers and the wireless carriers are, have the opportunity to completely personalize the look and feel of the device. Uh, the platform itself provides the architecture and the technology to enable them to do that. So for example, if they want to uh, target the teenage demographic, they can do so very easily. And somebody else might want to target the executive, the business executive. <laughs> Well, it seems like Google not only came up with an advanced piece of software, but also a strong business plan to go along with it. By allowing us to generate our own applications, we can now make our phones our own. We are working very positively together with uh, Google's. And then uh, we, we cannot reveal in detail today, but of course we are working very positively in order to prepare this specific phone from Android. HTC and Google has been collaborating on Android phones for some time. We expect to be shipping the first Android-based phone in the second half of this year. We introduced the Google enabled phone, so I think uh, there are strong demand of the internet access by the mobile, so we can satisfy those uh, uh, consumers' requirements without the Google relationships. We can partner with anybody. It can be Windows Mobile, it can be Android, Google's, it can be Symbian, it can be Linux. We are very flexible in our OS strategy and then our end delivery will be OS consumer, not who we are partnering with. We fully embrace Android platform. We fully embrace Windows Mobile and we fully embrace all the value that we can bring to our end users. The decision is not purely based on the cost of the operating system, but on the holistic decision that we evaluate. With that much support coming from all the top handset makers, Android will definitely give the bigger boys a run for their money. Looks like this new kid on the block is making everyone dance to its tunes. 
typically third-party developers are computer scientists or engineers who write their applications. But what we want to enable is we want to enable the consumer and the techie uh, a gadget person to be able to develop their own style of applications. And that's why uh, the internet metaphor makes sense on mobile. It's because we now have access to a new pool of developers, which are the internet developers. And take a look at that. What's happening inside your smartphones is just as exciting as the hardware itself. The stakes are much higher and the battle much bigger. As for us consumers, we just want something smarter and cheaper. And we've come to the end of this episode of That's IT. And as the sun is setting right behind me, I think it's my turn to take some time out and enjoy this beautiful city. In Seattle, I'm Timothy Go. That's it. Look at the bright side of life. Corp Private Limited. I turn to when I want to get a true Asian perspective. A name synonymous with fast, accurate news with an Asian insight. I watch Channel News Asia every morning. I uh, start the day every day watching uh, your show, and it's fantastic. Channel News Asia is where industry captains get their news from. The programs to me are insightful, very interesting. It covers all aspects, and not just only on news coverage, as well as lifestyle programs, and even to topical issues you know, that concerns you know, Singaporeans and Asians. No matter which industry you leave, if it's the Asian insight you're after. The bottom line is if you want to know about Asia, watch Channel News Asia. I watch Channel News Asia. Channel News Asia. Providing Asian perspectives. Patek Philippe is one of the few remaining family-owned Swiss watch manufacturers. The company designs and produces the world's finest timepieces. Time by Patek Philippe. Brought to you by Sincere Fine Watches. Good evening, everyone. I'm Melvin Yang. And I'm Melissa Hyak, and you're watching Primetime News on Channel News Asia. In the headlines, the group of eight industrialized uh, powers agreed to halve global carbon emissions by 2050 in an effort to fight global warming. Developing Muslim countries warn that escalating food and fuel prices could lead to widespread political unrest. Communist parties in India withdraw their support from the government to protest against a civilian nuclear deal with the U.S. And with one month to go before the Beijing Olympics, the Chinese capital remains covered in smog. First up, leaders of the Group of Eight Industrialized Nations have agreed to halve greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. They've also agreed on the need to set midterm goals for their shared vision, though they gave no numerical targets. Channel News Asia's Michio Ishida reports on the second day of the G8 summit in Hokkaido in Japan. Showing their commitment to cutting greenhouse gas.